Hey Tubers, so in the last video I rebuilt this Ryobi battery and got it all running again. Now there's a few concerns with how I built it with not high drain packs and stuff like that. Um, the comment section was really productive on this one. I really enjoyed the, the banter and, and stuff, but they gave me some really good ideas about some more videos. Now one is, I didn't put high drain cells in this. Is it going to be a dangerous pack? We're going to test that. How I'm going to test that in the next video, not this one, what we'll do is we'll use one of the old broken bits we'll loop a couple of cables through off the BMS we will unsolder the red we will unsolder the positive there create a bit of a loop out the side here we can actually test the amps of each device so we'll do that on the next one but for this one what I'm going to do is everyone says well can I use the old cells now the old cells are <laughs> description below and a better picture I guess um, and I believe these are all zero volt cells so we're going to run through one can we fix these cells and get them back up again and usable again now my first and instant reaction to that is no they are zero volt for a reason they've something has failed and caused them to be zero volt so in my normal day-to-day -day, these would instantly go into the recycle bin and I would never even dream about using them and I would strongly recommend that you guys never think about using them now the caveat to that is if you're in a location in the middle of nowhere or a certain country that doesn't have access to heaps and heaps of cells and these are the last six cells you have to run your light bulbs in your house naturally you do anything possible to get these things to work again I get you but personally if you're in a position to not life and death stuff please don't use them please don't do what I'm about to do I'm doing this so you don't have to I feel like meth busters let's do this right now we've got six cells I guess the first thing we should do is just tidy up some of these little dags a little bit And of course, if there's any extra, a quick tap on the bench will flatten down any extra dags. First things first, we should do some voltages. Nothing. 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 And nothing. Now, just to confirm, it's not my multimeter that's the problem. We'll put an NCR18650 up there. We've got 4.14, so it's definitely not the multimeter. We'll keep that out because we're going to need that later. Right now we've confirmed it's got no voltage. Now let's try and do continuity, or a beep test as some people call it. Uh, I think we can do a beep. Okay, so we're doing the resistance. So now if there's zero resistance and there's no connection, it means the CID's gone and this whole video stops. Nothing. 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 And nothing. Again, we'll try a good cell. And we instantly get a beep. So it looks like the CID has gone in these, and it's a, li a little, little plastic device underneath the positive terminal. Given that the CID has um, triggered, that could have been from heat, it could have been from a faulty BMS, it could have been from a short circuit. There's lots of reasons why the, the CID pops. But it is just a little diaphragm that contacts the positive terminal to the actual electronics and the, the physical battery inside of it. So it is a safety mechanism. So I'm going to stop this video here and say don't do this do not be tempted to do this okay i'm doing it because there's heaps of heaps of people all over the facebook group at diy powerwalls on facebook and secondlifestorage.com forum that i said don't just reset the cid it is not a good idea kids please right that said let's do the shit i really don't want to do in here with this particular cell i can put my screwdriver in there and actually reset the CID and it really is just a matter of levering it down and then pushing it back down again and that's all it is now unfortunately with these cells 
There is no room in order to do that. And anything that I do is going to damage it. And remember that these cells here, this is positive, right here is negative. So if I do something stupid with this cell and press down too hard, if I actually damage this plastic on the outside and I go here, this is positive, this is negative. So if I'm sitting here doing this, that's a dead short on the battery. You can see that just, and I can actually feel that starting to get hot. So this, again, is a really bad idea. I've got to stop saying really bad idea, and that really does get this hell hot. Okay, so putting time and effort into trying to create some weird and wonderful contraption that actually pops that back in again is completely worth it, because I'm never going to do it twice. So instead, I'm going to use a bit of violence and dumb luck um, and just see if I can force something in there. Bend that up a little bit. Have you got that other little screwdriver? Right out, we've got something else. And push that in there. And push that down. So that was definitely sitting up. Let's grab the multimeter and do a continuity test. And it's working again. Now we've got 0.2 volts. So we've got, a, we've got a little bit of volts on that cell. So that's actually enough now to try and revive it. Again, please don't do this at home. Please. These are faulty cells and I'm doing stupid shit. Rightio. So there's lots of ways I can actually go through now. Now that I've got some voltage in there or continuity in that cell, um, it's still not a safe cell at all. And I, We've got the thermal camera set up too so we can watch heat. Now one of the easiest ways to bump a really flat cell because these devices here will charge an 18650 not a problem if it is above a nominal voltage and each device is slightly different I don't personally know all the different voltages but the TP4506 is apparently the lowest so we can plug that in cells in a TP4506 and the red light indicates that it will start charging so we'll put that cell down there that's the one we've just reset the CID We'll put one that's not reset, put it in, and nothing. So the TP4506 has a, you know, a, a good record for being able to charge up really, really low cells, and it does it a little bit slower than the bigger ones, so they shouldn't get too hot. Let's have a quick look whether or not it's getting hot. As we can see there, that cell has come up significantly in temperature, about 27 degrees. 30 on the positive end go to the bench just below it 24 degrees go to the bench above it 23 and a half back on the cell 29 degrees so that's so that is dangerous in itself with that sort of temperature rise so fast and I can I can feel that on my on the palm of my hand I can I can feel that extra heat coming through so that's not ideal. Let's pop that cell out and have a quick look at the voltage increase. That battery was only in there for about three minutes tops and the battery voltage has actually come down a little bit. So I have to, I'd have to say that TP4506 isn't charging it at all. The second method of charging or getting that back up to a chargeable voltage is by using, I think they called it a boost charger or a, or a parallel charger. So you literally just put one cell in. Now these are all joined together, so this is just for my IMAX. And put another cell in. And then the energy is going to transfer from this cell to this cell. Now, you can speed that process up a little bit by actually attaching the IMAX to it. Right, a few minutes later, that has literally only been uh, running for a minute and 58 seconds. Just clicked over to two minutes. We'll have a look here. Uh, two minutes in. That's already at 54 degrees, 56. Sixty-one, sixty-two. So that, that temperature is coming up very, very fast. So I'm gonna pull the plug on that. I really don't wanna go that go any further with that. We'll have a look at that cell underneath the thermal camera again. Oh, 
on that positive end we got 65 degrees so that is really really bad and by bad I mean you shouldn't bloody do it because I can I can now that's a, that's a heater now right yeah go back to here let's have a look at the voltage right yeah get the get the old peak meter back in here again make myself look like a noob now even though that's heating up and trying to charge it is still 0.14 of a volt so it's not actually going up in voltage but it's getting hot again another good reason not to be doing this but right, let's put it into the BTC 3100 opus nothing we're getting nothing null which means it's not charging we'll try it in the night core oh we're getting some amps there error okay so it tried to start charging it so maybe we might need to really really slowly charge it in the TP4506 okay well, we've been sitting beside this cell being bored off our nuts for the last 15 minutes and it's at 0.69 of a volt it was 0.66 of a volt when I started trying to charge it on this TP4506 and it is not doing much at all other than heating up unfortunately it's not as hot as it was when it was on the IMAX about half an hour ago and I did let the cell cool down a lot before I put it back down in here once it was at 60 degrees I did not just chuck it straight in here so I think we'll just take it out of there do a final voltage on it 0 0.17 16 15 14 13 so the voltage is actually dropping so that is the stupidest video I have ever done um, I'm really regretting doing it but I'm gonna upload it anyway and I'm gonna say again if you're reviving cells that are zero volt and with no continuity you're mad and you're doing something that is really really bad for the community if something goes wrong in the process of doing this video I got my buddy standing behind the camera um, he has been proactively watching my back because I've been handling this cell a lot without any protection um, in hindsight we, th we, th we thought about a few things with trying to do this video and 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 how are we going to do it safely and we do have um, down on the floor we had a fire extinguisher and a tin bucket full of salted water now, of course my plan was the salted salted water dissipates energy faster than normal water would um, thus rendering it inert and also cooling it down there's almost 10 liters of water down there I reckon so we did have a little bit of safety sort of standing behind us we we didn't just go at this gung-ho because I know it's dangerous I know I've said this a hundred times in this video but tough luck kids don't try this at home put it in the bin recycle bin and move on thank you very much for tuning in if this helped you, do that. If it didn't, do that. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.